Will Ferrell stole a bit of my introduction. I was going to make some Will Ferrell jokes. I have to watch all the movies because otherwise people make jokes and I have no idea what's going on. But um, thank you for spending some time with me today. Um, so as I mentioned, uh, uh, or as I was mentioning in my introduction, I've been in cybersecurity for about almost 20 years now. I did about 16 years at Booz Allen, um, supporting everything from military radios and securing military data to supporting cyber operations and ultimately finished out my time in the financial services sector, helping remove bad guys from environments and maturing their cyber programs. Came to TikTok about two and a half years ago or so um, to build a program that included people, process, and technology to address the national security concerns. I've, I've, me, my teams, my coworkers have battled nation states my entire career. I came here, I saw this as an extension of that to really secure US citizens and soldiers and their data. So fundamentally, um, everything boils down to kind of these, these top three concerns, right? It's about unauthorized access to data. It's about state manipulation over content, right? Is someone manipulating those videos that you're seeing? It's about, can you really trust the software that's developed globally? And so from the very beginning, we kind of centered around these, these five principles or, or pillars here in this diagram. And what it's all about is separating out the people around an organizational design, a governance model. How do you have technical controls to really make sure that that DAC, you can assure who can access information and what those data flows look like? Technology assurance or software assurance. So how do you make sure that software is vetted? Content assurance is about how do you make sure that experience is authentic and those videos you're seeing aren't being manipulated? And the last piece, compliance and monitoring, the goal here is to have a mass amount of oversight so you don't have to take our word for it. There'll be a lot of third-party auditors that will be directly accountable to the government um, that can that can verify that we're living up to these commitments. So I'm going to kind of zoom into each one of these. So for the first piece, is, it's all about governance, right? So how can you trust these people? How do you make sure they're free from influence? So we're standing up a new, or we've stood up a new subsidiary called TikTok US Data Security, um, and there's like kind of three primary components to that. One is there'll be a completely independent board. So if you're familiar with other uh, CFIUS agreements, the concept of a proxy board, essentially control over this new company will really boil down to three people that have to have no prior affiliation with TikTok or ByteDance. They have to have national security credentials, cybersecurity credentials, and they, are, they have the fiduciary responsibility to the US government, and they have to be approved by the US government. This separates out the control. The next piece is there's a, a set of leaders. I'm one of those leaders. The reason, um, I, my title is interim security officer, is I also would have to be approved by the government. So if the government isn't comfortable with me doing this job, I can't do it. And I'm accountable to the government for this job. Then there's vetted personnel. So you heard Kemba mention the defense industrial base and being able to engage with them. When this is all said and done, the requirements around personnel is gonna be closer to working for a government contractor than it will be a tech company. So extensive background checks, no fiscal, no financial or fiscal ties to ByteDance or TikTok. Um, even, even citizens of certain countries will not be allowed to work here, right? So this goes beyond what any tech company is doing today. It's much closer to government contractors. We're also going to have independent offices. So there's little icons on this chart, but one of the important pieces is physical separation of these people, right? So me and my teams, the, the 2,500 people that we're talking about will be physically separated from ByteDance and TikTok personnel. So this is really how we, we separate these concerns around influence and really create a workforce that is accountable to the government, that they're living up these commitments to protecting user data and the systems that serve US users. So even if you trust the people, what about the technology? So the, the other thing that we're doing is we've taken the global TikTok platform, right? This is the platform that serves users around the world. We've replicated it and we've isolated it. So we've replicated, this is the, the algorithm, this is user data, this is the advertising systems, this is e-commerce, this is content moderation. We've taken everything that is TikTok and supports TikTok, replicated it, isolated in the Oracle Cloud. What I mean by that, I know this is, is just a pictorial representation, but there are these technical gateways. In the government, you would call them cross-domain solutions. The concept here is for this new TikTok US platform that exists today now, Every single bit and byte of data that enters and leaves this platform is inspected and it has to conform to data schema up of data with the US government. So every single bit and byte gets validated. These gateways, they're, they're real things. They are controlled by Oracle, they're monitored by Oracle, and they're also monitored by my team, USDS, this new company we stood up. 
There's also the mobile app, right? So even if you secure all the backend infrastructure, what about the mobile app itself? How do you know the mobile app isn't sending data directly to China? So going forward over the course of this year, we're gonna deploy um, this new thing, this Oracle Sandbox. Think of it as a wrapper that goes around the mobile app. So if you're a US user and you open TikTok, you'll actually be opening a, a, a wrapper, the Oracle Sandbox, and the app will operate inside of that. What that means is if that app tries to send data somewhere it shouldn't, like to China, it will get blocked by that wrapper, it will alert Oracle, and it will ultimately, Oracle will have to alert the US government, real time, right? So this is how we kind of put isolation and wrappers around both the backend infrastructure and the mobile app itself. So what about the software? That third pillar was all about software assurance. Again, we're going to, we're breaking new ground here. No one's ever done anything like this, but essentially what we're doing is every single line of code, whether it's TikTok code, whether it's third party code, whether it's open source code that could be developed everywhere, every single line of code has to be inspected by Oracle and another third party source code inspector approved by the US government. So you've got two parties looking at every single line of code and it has to come through this, these dedicated transparency centers. This is where this work will get done. And it's, it's happening today. We actually opened our first one up in Columbia, Maryland up on January 12th. So if and only if it makes it through this process, the software gets signed and then it can be deployed. If it does not go through this process, it does not run. So every single piece of software needs to get inspected, validated, and only then can it actually operate for the US users. But just like last time, there's also a mobile app. So the mobile app's a little different because it's gotta leave kind of this, this server infrastructure. It's gotta leave the, leave the cloud, right? And so what we're doing for the mobile app is Oracle is actually gonna compile the app and they're gonna hand deliver it to Apple and Google. The reason we do this is that way we can make sure that the same code that Oracle and that third party reviewed is the same code that actually shows up at Apple and Google and it wasn't manipulated along the way. This will be the first time anyone's had a third party kind of deliver an app to the App Store on their behalf. And then, the, so the fourth pillar is content assurance. This is the last really deep, technical, complex slide, I promise. But um, this is a gross simplification of how recommendation engines and algorithms work, but I, I've tried to present it this way to kind of help explain the premises of how it works and then kind of overlay the controls on it. So fundamentally, if, if you upload a mobile video, it goes through content moderation, right? It's got to conform to our community guidelines. So these are humans and machines that look for things like too much skin, hate speech, violence. If it violates those guidelines, it gets taken down. After it makes it through the moderation process. Now, if you think about like a known good batch of videos, right, that don't violate our community guidelines. The way the algorithm works, it, it's, it's incredibly fascinating. I'll try not to nerd out on you too much, but um, it really doesn't take into account the video itself, the content. So it doesn't know if it's a dog video or a dad joke or a fishing video or travel. What it does is it looks at it and says, you know what? Will engaged with videos one, three, and five and Brooke engaged with videos one, three, and five, they're very similar. So then when Brooke likes video nine, we're gonna show Will video nine. And when Will, Will likes video 12, we're gonna show it to Brooke. And so really what it is, it's, it's comparing users to other users to, that engage with similar kinds of content. It doesn't actually know about the content itself. And then we do do promotion and filtering. So when the World Cup was going on, we promoted the World Cup, thought it was relevant, it's time sensitive, it's exciting, so we thought you would want to see that. When Taylor Swift joined the platform, we promoted Taylor Swift. When Beyonce joined the platform, we promoted Beyonce. These are standard business things that we do because we think users want to see it. We want it to be compelling and engaging. We also filter some videos. So we have rules. There's like a short, less than 100 rules that say things like don't show the same creator back to back. Don't show the same song back to back. Make sure at least four out of eight videos are from your home region. These are things that just make it a compelling experience for our users. So for this, Oracle and third party source code inspector, they're gonna check every single one of those moderation models, right? So make sure the too much skin model is only taking down videos of too much skin and not videos of Tiananmen Square or anti-China videos. They're gonna make sure the recommendation algorithm that what I'm saying is truthful and it's not looking at the content itself. It doesn't have a bias or a political agenda. And then for promotion and filtering, we're gonna provide a list of every promotion we run and every filtering rule that exists to the independent board, to the government, to this content advisory council, it's gonna be completely transparent and then that's gonna be validated by third parties. 
And so the last piece here, that last pillar, there's a massive amount of third party oversight. So there's at least seven independent third parties, starting with CPIUS themselves, trusted technology provider oracles, hosting the data, checking the software, monitoring and running those gateways. There's another source code inspector, just in case they miss something. There's a data deletion order to make sure we cleaned up all the old data in the rest of the world systems. There's cybersecurity auditors, third party monitors, third party auditors, a whole bunch of stuff. Um, so this is gonna, the end goal here is that you don't need to take our word for it. You're gonna have other people approved by the government that will have to do this. And then the very last thing, I promise, we haven't waited. I can't, I can't explain how hard and complex this is. As I said, we've been working on this for close to two years. We've implemented the new entity. We've stood up um, that, all that infrastructure, an independent US platform. The software is being looked at as we sit in this room, it's been going through, it's go they're going through it line by line. We're still in the early days of content assurance. A lot of that has been building and getting uh, the team's access that they need to be able to do that work. And then compliance and monitoring, we still have to identify a lot of these third parties, but they, they have to be approved by the government. So I, I know that was a bit of a motorcycle ride through an art museum. It's tried hard to cram two years worth of work into 15 minutes or less, but um, hopefully we was able to share some insight with you all today. I think we have time for a question maybe or two. Uh, is this working? Great. Uh, Alex Howard, uh, disappointed there wasn't more dancing today, but glad you came and spoke to you us. You don't want to see that, trust um, me. But uh, in, in all seriousness, uh, would TikTok use its influence um, to support a data protection law in the United States modeled on uh, the one in California or another nation? I uh, know you all don't want to get banned. Would you support a level playing field? So I, I first, by, I'll admit that I'm the security guy, not the policy guy, but I, I really do believe that the answer to your question is, is yes. I think... Again, being the security guy, I'm incredibly proud of what we're doing, and I think it, it sets a new bar, right? I think data should be localized. I think we should have these kinds of security controls in place. I think software should get vetted. I think you need to have mechanisms. We're going we're gonna to be the first company that opens up all their AI models, right? Everybody else treats this as a black box. We're going to open it up. It's going to be an unprecedented amount of transparency. I think everybody wins if everybody institutes things like this. So I'm all for level playing field, but... We're not waiting on that. We're just going to do this anyway. Hi. Uh, oh, I'll stand up. Hi, Luke Hogue with the Lincoln Network. Um, I'm just kind of curious about the the auditor side of this because you you've talked about the importance of third party auditors, um, but Oracle, you know, is is kind of. Uh, has a financial interest in what TikTok is doing. Can you talk a little bit more about how you're selecting the third-party auditors specifically for, for source code and the data gates and all of that? Sure. Um, so we, we haven't done it yet for a lot of the third parties, but ultimately they all have to get approved by the government. So we're going to go through a, a standard kind of process where we take the requirements, we put out RFPs, we get bids, right? Um, and then it actually the government requirements vary on the different kinds of um, auditors but ultimately they all get approved by the government. But we're gonna follow a standard RFP process. You're gonna see a lot of the you know, top cybersecurity companies or data companies and things like that that really can do this at a technical level. Thanks so much, Ru. Thank you. Thank you.